All right, you want me to put the mic on? All right. <laughs> facial recognition on me and it says this is what happens when you get gray hair it says I'm 95% confident it's you Tim now we can do this with scale the way we shard the Azure databases and with performance and this is on a cheap ass excuse my language this is on a cheap you know cell phone camera with me so now I'm going to aim it at you, and it's going to go, I hope this works, it's going to go, shit, I don't know who the hell you are, which it did, it said, I don't know who the hell you are, so I'm going to say, and, and it took, took photos. it rapid fired a bunch of pictures of us. Now realize we're not storing the picture, we're doing in the cloud, we're sending up pictures, and it's, it's crunching and doing a, uh, a bunch of trading calculus and doing a mesh of the face. Okay, so done. And then, your name is Mike. Oops. Mike. And I cannot do your last name. I can't <laughs> even pronounce it. Yeah, T-W-O-H-E-Y. Tui. 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 All right, so there's Mike, and it said, it says I'm adding, I'm adding, I'm adding, so we're provisioning him. This will take a little bit because I'm going to, well, I should put it on my mind as opposed to a cellular network. Okay, now you would expect if I go back and go like this and get him in the crosshairs, boom, there's Mike, and I'm 95% sure that's Mike. That's not the cool demo. Ready for the cool demo? Okay, ready, Mike? Yep. Now, if you look closely, you've got oh, age, race, image. gender, emotion. right? Emotion, that's whether he's smiling or laughing. Yeah. There, boom, you've got him. 
See that? It got it. Mike. Right? And it's and it's saying Mike is Mike is this UI is kind of nasty. We need more screen real estate here. It's saying I'm not really confident about Mike's sexuality. Oh. <laughs> but I'm fairly confident he's within the ballpark of 43 years old. <laughs> and I'm I'm kinda sorta of think he's white. And then uh, what's that last demographic? Oh, and then here, right here, it's got you. So let me stand in front of it just so it gets me. Okay. And then uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to pretend like I'm smiling. You know, I could be miserable on the inside, but if I pretend like I'm smiling, it's going to say, "Hey, he's happy about this." That you gotta be younger than 72, though. Is it Sam 72? Yeah. Damn it! I did this in front of, I did this. I did this in front of a huge audience like six weeks ago, and it said I was Asian. Asian? Yeah. And, like, and I said, "Darn it! I'm Asian!" And I'm whoop. In the future, uh, it will be able to uh, differentiate green and uh, real smile. Oh, sure. Be more machine learning. Yeah, yeah with, with machine learning and, and some other tricks, where, you know, the, the point here is, yeah, see, it hates me. Um, <laughs> the, point here, the point here is uh, facial recognition is bulletproof. Well, we can get it almost bulletproof in the, light, in the right scenarios. Um, demographic profiling is tricky still, very tricky. And if you think about it, um, a Japanese person looks totally different than a Filipino. Right, uh, hat, glasses. Although it did pretty well with you. Yeah. Um, if you tilt your head, you know everything starts on the plane of the eyes, and then you build the mesh out from there. You can you can fool. But um, we're not done with this. We're going to come back to this because there. This is just a demo showing the technology, and then I'll I'll show you the, the implementation. All right, thanks, Mike. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm Tim, and I'm happy to be here. It's been a long time. Go, go. So this setting expectations. This is a um, this is a like intro to programming connect two version two session that I do at the, the big conferences. And I, I'll just change it around a little bit for, for this. Uh, everything I have here, you're more than welcome to have uh, the source code, and, and we can't have that. So. There's IP in this, the facial record thing, this thing. But in this session, either anything I have, you can, you're more than welcome to have, and you would email me, and my email address will be at the end also, if you want this stuff. And I'll send you a link to download it. Okay? Um, so, to, yeah, uh, I've been doing this a long time. This is the uncomfortable about Tim stuff, so you don't have to, to, talk, to talk about me. And I'm not going to talk about myself either. Uh, what can I tell you? When I didn't have gray hair and I wasn't 10 pounds overweight, I worked on some famous and some not so famous product teams at Microsoft, some server based teams. Back in those days, we built software with 2,500 people and it would take two years to build it. Isn't that amazing? Like mid 90s? Isn't that amazing? Did you know Windows NT has 65,000 lines of, 65 million lines of code? Yeah, how times have changed, how the tools and the platform and the cloning has become. So much better. Here's my company. You don't know its name. Um, and you don't care what we do. But you, if you're using a computer, you're definitely using something with code. Uh, this is a handful of the customers that we can talk about. Most of the work we do is NDA. Uh, why would I come all the way out to Fresno, all the way north from Fresno, from, from Chicago, to do this? Well, because Mike asked me about a year ago. But in addition to that, because we've got those, which way is uh, east? Is that east? You have this yeah, big okay. set of mountains with big trout in them, and I'm a fly fisherman. So I always, I always leverage this trip and go into the Sierras, which I'll be doing tonight, actually. Um, and spending the weekend fly fishing on the current. Uh, and every once in a while, we get an employee or a customer out of me speaking in front of audiences like you. 
These are famous people using our software. Since the last time I talked to you guys, we have been done some very high profile work. Anytime you see someone touching a screen, almost anytime you see someone touching a big screen on TV, that's us. CNN, NBC, ABC, you, you name it. Um, we've got uh, the presidential elections coming up, the, uh, the Iowa caucus stuff. Uh, we're building all that self software, including the voting app. If you're .NET people, is everyone like a programmer, .NET person, developer? Yes. So. Yeah. Um, this is all WPF. Most of the broadcast TV stuff, stuff we do is all WPF, plus some direct X mixed in, you know, because we do some fancy stuff. And yeah, we do a lot of Connect stuff, uh, and then Surface Hub now, and things like that. Oh, well, we'll get to that. So here's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about where this $200 device makes sense, and all the places it doesn't make sense. T I M K U S. It's just not going to replace the keyboard, right? You know, there are places where this little device can really augment a user experience and software. But data entry is not one of them. In fact, there's nothing that can replace yet that can replace a keyboard. Um, let's see, what else are we going to talk about? Oh, I'll, I'll show some code. We'll even step through some C sharp. Uh, we'll talk about the roadmap to technology, and then if you know me, we'll be demoing for sure. This is uh, my this this connect thing is is part of the NUI thing, the national user interface. This isn't Microsoft's uh, definition. Of Nui, this would be mine. It's touching it, it's waving at it, it's speaking to it. Ultimately, it's thinking it. We have neural-based interfaces these days. If you've heard of a motive and some of these other companies, where you actually think at a computer and it reacts. Why would you do that? Um, well, I would personally love to build software for the millions of people in the world who have lost um, complete control of their physical bodies, like MS. Uh, quadriplegic stuff like that. Wouldn't that be awesome to build, or someone in a wheelchair to, to have them steer and drive the wheelchair just by thinking? I think that would be awesome. We're, we're probably about a decade away from that. And then I'm told we're in the year of the wearable, right? Or was that last year? So this is a this is like a 30 cent accelerometer crammed into a hundred and twenty five dollar plastic band. You realize that? You know that we, we, the reason I have one, do you, do you guys have these things? Do you use these? They're so stupid. <laughs> we, we, we did a company thing, you know, to get everybody fit. Programmers are typically not very healthy. They eat stuff like those cookies all day. So anyways, I won the contest and everyone said, I'm never playing again if Tim's going to play. And you want to know why? Because when you're marching down a river going like this, it's triple counting you. Right? <laughs> That's how I'm <laughs> Um, yeah, let's, uh, okay, so I want you to stare at this very closely. Oh, I'm in that weird mode. I want you to stare at this very closely. This isn't going to be that impressive until the end. Does that make sense? That probably doesn't make sense. We want to do this one. So this is part of how I or we freaked out the, the craft people. This is nothing more than digital advertising, right? So Mike, you mind, uh, oh wait a minute, where's my... Hey, yeah, I just you want to just stand in front of this thing. And just, you don't need to, just, and look at the connect. Oh, look at the connect? Yeah. Okay. Now just walk around. Just walk around a little bit. Now walk in front of it. Okay, so it, it sensed him, and it took it out of that that mode, oh, and then okay. he could walk up to the screen and touch see. one of these things, you know, and it would give him some content, and you know, blah 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 blah. This is this is all out of whack because um, it's rendered for big portrait refrigerator. This is this. Okay, I kind of gave it away. All right, you're off the boat until the next time. <laughs> This runs in um, coolers that you would see in a grocery store, uh, refrigerators, in transparent HD capable touchscreens. You're going to start seeing these in the grocery stores. 
Kraft and Nestle Mover and Co. are the ones we're building it for. And um, it was doing some stuff that I'll show you later. Fair enough? Okay. And I just, I just want to get you I'm somewhat excited about that. Okay. Well, you saw, if it was, if it was you know, rendered correctly, it would have been running those videos, and then the minute he walks in front of it, it would be like, boom, here's, here's some content that you can engage in. Uh, okay, so that's really, there's that really quickly. Um, uh, we already talked about this, didn't we? Uh, yeah. That looks like it did. Uh, here, this is, uh, it's not so new anymore, the Connect version 2, and that's important um, for a number of reasons that we'll talk about in a bit. Um, this thing, the last time I was here I was using a Connect version 1 device. It was, uh, at list price, it was $250. You could see about 10 to 15 feet. This thing sees, is $200, $50 cheaper. It sees three times as far, as far three times as well in total darkness, and it is the most amazing device in the world. That's the good news. There's bad news coming. I'm a good news, bad news type guy. That's the good news. Amazing, inexpensive device. One of the bad news would be, look how big it is. You know, when we cram these things in the cooler, we literally cram them. And they're obvious. It's obvious you can see them. Yeah, oh, feel free to be interactive. Yeah. That helps me. So, so, so they bundled all these with the Xbox One, right? And people didn't use them, didn't necessarily want them. So I got mine off eBay for sixty, seventy dollars. So. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So no, the, it's worse than ways that. To get, yeah. Remember, I'm not a Microsoft employee, so yeah. we can we can bash them where they deserve. <laughs> with what was it? PlayStation, the one it computes. It, it computes yeah. with. I'm, I'm not much of a yeah, game. I'm not a game tech. Yeah. So well, the PlayStation was about a hundred dollars cheaper, and Microsoft is getting their butt kicked. Yeah. Right. So they yanked the Kinect out of the box to get it in parity, in price. And it, I don't think it really worked. The, the real complication was people like you started buying Kinect separate, and they ran out of them for right. six months. Yeah. And they still have a shortage. Dumb dummies. Bad product line. But that consumer market in games is crazy. Anyways. Um, you know, this is a traditional HD camera. We'll, we'll go all through the, the interfaces in a bit here. It's got an amazing microphone that can, you know, we can engineer it to listen to someone specifically. Uh, all of, because it's Windows, it's all 36 languages, you know, that type of stuff. And then um, it's SDK, it's pretty brilliant. Um, I want you to stare very closely at this. I was staring at this on the airplane today as I was um, putting this together. And you can see that um, November of 2007, that's when the first Connect appeared on the consumer market, they went, it's, what is that, just short of three years and did eight major releases of that SDK. That's as fast as I've ever seen Microsoft go on anything, including Visual Studio. That, that's amazing. That team was productive. So what Microsoft did is they pulled a bunch of Xbox people a bunch of uh, Visual Studio folks, and then some MSR folks. Put them in a team, and they built this thing, and they just ran like the wind. And then, look, so then, shortly thereafter, they shipped this device, September of 2014, and then the, the um, SDK with it. So we're talking about close to a year of nothing, when they were doing revs every four months. Want to know why? The reason is interesting. The HoloLens. That whole team is building the HoloLens. We don't have one yet. I'm told we're getting one really soon and we get to build a, a flagship app for them. But does everyone know what the HoloLens is? It's a hologram generator. It's got a .NET or it's got a Windows API to it. Um, pro they'll probably screw it up and make it Windows 10 only. I don't know. But, but the, the fact that you could do this type of stuff is, is pretty cool. And if you've seen the demos, they're spectacular, like from Bill, they're just spectacular. I'm totally into this stuff, sorry. Okay, um, so uh, I told you that the, if you could get a device right now, which you'd have to get off eBay for 75 bucks, <laughs> they go about 200 bucks. 
Um, everything else is free. Um, but I haven't got to the really bad news. Um, and well, I should just tell you, one of the really bad news is this has a Windows 8 dependency. Right? Not many people. I know. I know. It is what it is. Um, there's, there's reasons for that, and they're not all for licensing reasons. But the only way to run one of these things until, until somebody hacks the interface is to run Windows 8. Um, and then the good news is the SDK is rock solid. It's awesome. There's a ton of source code, and they give you all the guidance you could ever want. Um, oh, you're more than, I already told you, you're more than welcome to these slides, so you don't have to write down you or anything. Uh, this SDK is no longer new, so I should get rid of that. Um, we'll do, I'll show you how to publish to the Windows Store, but you don't have to publish to the Windows Store. You can still run build apps in desktop mode, most, mostly in WPF. But believe it or not, there's a web interface for these things. Uh, here's the typical scenarios for a Connect device. Um, like I said, not a CRUD app, but typically the stuff we build, well nowadays it's all in retail, CPGs, uh, consumer packaged you know, goods. And, um, and um, hotels, hospitality, stuff like that. We've certain, certainly done a uh, ton of healthcare. Mm. And education, that's for sure. Okay, so um, here's how it, how it rates uh, as compared to the original device. It, I told you this thing sees well. The first demos that I was doing were like in a completely dark room. And that infrared camera could pick me up. 30 feet away, in a completely dark room. That's pretty cool. And do a field of view, it's almost a 180. Um, I mentioned it's got an HD capable camera at 30 frames per second. Um, I thought the mics were great on the old device, but they're better here. Oh, it tracks. There's a lot you get for free in Connect. It is totally brain dead simple to do skeletal tracking. Uh, they don't call it that anymore, they call it body tracking. And it'll track six humans at a time for free. You don't have no calculus, no trigonometry, anything like that. I'll, I'll show you how to do that here in code in a second. Um, oh, it's so good now that uh, I'll show you. I'll show you this in a second too. It can distinguish fingers from distance. Technically, we're really close to being able to do the sign language. That would be cool. That would be a great input device as opposed to. Um, yeah, so uh, you're engineers, so you've got a, you guys want to see the inside of it. Um, this cooler thing has gone crazy, so we, we just manufactured a whole bunch of these coolers, you know. And the, yeah, they, uh, it, it's probably my fault, but the, the hood for the cooler, you know, it sits on top of the cooler, and it's the, 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 the manufacturer covered everything but this, right? But look, look at what's over here. No. <laughs> so they had to send them all back to the machine shop, and they were not pleased <laughs> with me. Um, yeah, so basically, this is just two physical uh, sensors inside this thing. The, the two, for lack of a better word, cameras. One that does the IR, and then one that does that HD camera. But when you start sucking data out of them, you can do things like depth. I told you casually a second ago that it'll do, it'll track humans for free. It'll pick humans out of a room, automatically give you the skeletal joints. Um, but with depth, you could recognize the logo on a Coke can or Pepsi from 20 feet away, technically, with depth and color, probably. Um, so. Uh, that's the uh, data type of the HD camera. This is the infrared uh, data type. Um, and the infrared camera here does a very, very good job. And then I was, I was talking about depth. Depth is how, remind me to do a little demo, depth is how you um, green screen. For free, you can green screen yourself. You know what I mean by green screen? You, you know, like in, in the movies or, or on TV. It'll do, this little camera will do that, like with a tiny, with a hundred lines of code. It's kind of cool. Um, and this is the body index. This is, this is used, we use this uh, to pull 
Like when I made Mike walk up here, the real cool rocket science in that demo app, that demographic profiling thing, when, and where it, it facially recognized him, wasn't really figuring out it was Mike. It was plucking faces out of people moving around. That, that we used the, the body print for that. That it'll allow us to get that. Once we get that, we get a skeleton. We get a skeleton, we get a head, and then we just rapid fire pictures and get as, as good a picture as we can. Obviously, lighting is going gonna, is gonna to mean a lot in that type of thing. And you saw it too. The lighting, you know, the, the environment isn't set for a good demographic profile. This is what I've been talking about. I keep calling it skeletal tracking. We should, I shouldn't anymore because they renamed it, or they shouldn't have renamed it. Um, but it's called body frame now. Um, this is nine connect apps out of ten are going to use this, this data type, uh, because it's so powerful and cool. Um, Ah, let's see. Oh, this is the, the audio. Um, um, I, I'm not a, an audio field or an audio engineer, but um, you know I've got some stats here. Uh, uh, interval of 16 milliseconds. Uh, it's they associate with an audio, audio beam. There's four microphones in the sensor that allow it to pluck someone out uniquely. Not even someone, something who's a dog or something like that. And the audio runs at 62 frames per second. So, so speech recognition with this bad boy is really, really good. In fact, in a powerful computer, and speech rec recognition, it's all about CPU. If you give this thing CPU, it's bulletproof. Okay, so there they are. Those are all the uh, the frame um, uh, the the data sources for, that are coming at the Connect. So let me just show you. Uh, how they, how they, um, what the connect is actually seeing. So, uh, bottom middle, so second from the right, second from the left. See the green, hands open. Hands closed, finger. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, feel free to jump up. <laughs> See the, the depth camera in the back? I mean, you know. Are you using this camera right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm out of frame right here. And then I'm speaking, I'm speaking, it's top right, I'm speaking, see that's following me? I'm speaking over here, hello, prove my point, there we go. So I, so I have this connect going back here as well, mm -hmm. but that's with the... Wow. No. No. And we won't get cancer here. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so, so this is what the connect sees. And when you combine these raw data feeds, really, um, it's, it's moving data so quickly, you're just sucking it in, right, and, and processing it. Um, and when you combine them, you can do some interesting things. So, uh, let's see, we did that, we did that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's the stack. Um, I keep saying you get for free. You get for free. So you have the, the device itself, those connect drivers, that's what somebody mentioned machine learning, was you. Um, that's the Microsoft research, they're building the actual drivers for this thing. That runtime is, you know, we're, we're, we're high level language programmers, right? We're used to runtimes. Um, one would speculate that the Windows 10 well, there'll be, I, I think we can assume there's going to be a, a universal API for this thing. God, I hope so. I hope they don't screw that up. And there will always be .NET forever and ever and ever. Um, the, in the version 1, you can only do .NET on the client. But now, believe it or not, you can do web-based uh, in JavaScript. If, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. Question. Yes, sir. That, that stack, all the red or from the red, it's in your machine, so the, the real brain computation is happening on your computer. Great, so that's a very good question. In itself, it's, it's just... The answer is sort of. 
<laughs> mostly. I should say mostly. Yeah, the heavy lifting is um, mostly done in the sensor itself. That's that, that driver lift. That runtime is just an interface to programming languages, right? So, you know, really this driver thing should be a different color. But yeah, the, the, the guts of it are, are right here. But the, the driver, it runs on your machine, so it's not, not in the same. It, well, it it's runs in the device. It runs here and here. That's the power. It runs here. It's embedded here. So the sensor really just sucks data into this thing. And then this thing is doing When the prototypes first came out uh, of this device, it came with a block. You know, a surface, a circuit board. Yeah. yeah. And but that's all Microsoft's going to tell us. Someone like you would have to pull it apart and reverse engineer it to really figure out what's going on. Oh, that's partially good if somebody wants to make a Windows 10 driver or something like that. Then for competition, there's or a Linux driver. Or a Linux. Right. Yeah. I mean, in, it's a new Microsoft. <laughs> I don't think they mind if someone made a Linux driver. They don't seem to mind anymore, which is cool. I love that. Um, so let me show you what comes with the thing. When you, uh, I, I had a URL earlier. If you just search on, you know, Connect for Windows, um, you get the SDK, and it installs. This bad boy. Uh, this is one of the things it installs. This is the browser, and unlike other places in Microsoft, especially Windows, I wish Windows would do this. Um, they can do a bunch of admin and sample apps, and directly running the stuff in source. So, what what the heck does that mean? Um, this verifier thing is what I first did to make sure that my Connect was talking. Um, and it says, I'm not so sure your, your service has the right USB 3, but it's okay. And everything is, else is good. But this is what I wanted to show you. Like, what were we just talking about? Okay, we were talking about body basics. So, install means put the source code on my, on my, in my my folders in, in Visual Studio projects. You can just run this stuff directly. And then, uh, you know, this will be skeletal tracking, I think, yeah. Right? So, source code for that simple app, right there at the SDK. I was going to show you... I think I had it. I was playing with it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, here we go. So, I did the coordinate mapping thing, which is... Sorry, hang on. Oh, I forgot to tell you. See, there's a ton of awesome stuff in here. But I did this. I installed this source code. It is this. And then I started hacking away. And I built this. God, I hope this runs. So um, I was in Brussels. <laughs> The, the, I was telling you, it, it profiled me as Japanese. Um, I was in Brussels the other day. This is some famous palace in Brussels. That's like 100 lines of source code. I just think that's so impressive. You know, some of the source is a little bit over my head, but um, that, that is so cool. So let's do the infrared thing while I, while I think of it. <clears throat> There's the infrared camera. No, we can turn off the light. No. <laughs> Michael just get creepy if you turn off the light. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving right along.
So, um, oh, these are my cheat notes. This this is how you create. At one point, I'll just do this in Visual Studio. This is how you create a uh, Windows Store app. You don't have to create a store app, but the Connect team wanted me to do this to show you how brain dead simple it is. Yet, some of this stuff is not totally obvious. So um, let me do this again. Turn on the um, the um, the webcam. And what else? You have to turn on the webcam. Oh, and the microphone, of course. So that's in this package manifest. I'm just going to open it, and then it's over here capabilities. So I want to do webcam, and I do microphone. Okay. And then uh, let's see. We also need to add some form of reference, right? Uh, uh, this is fairly interesting. Um, the have you ever seen? You ever seen that? Well, how do I set this up? If you're if you're using like beta versions of Visual Studio and beta versions of .NET, you, you'll see how the Windows team breaks the interface all the time. They'll name an interface. And you'll write some sample code, right? And then they'll come up with a new version and they'll rename the interface. The break. It happens all the time. This is one that they never got around to changing. It's still called Connect Preview. But that's that that's the actual interface. Right? And then you need a uh, uh, oh you gotta add reference to it, of course. So what can we do? You'd have to do this type of thing. Do 
Okay, you explain to me why visual studio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it, I have no idea. I hear I was going to tell you. Oh, this is sometimes. So easy. Sometimes when there's errors, I, don't, I think it like disables confused. telesense. Yeah. You know, you would think like 25 <laughs> years of building Visual Studio and they would overcome little stuff like this. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's how you you would get rolling. Um, and then I'll show you in a second. Implement a way on this step. So we'll just let this go and we'll keep driving. It's too funny. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll just talk about C sharp today because I'm so not a web guy, but just understand that there's an API on the JavaScript side for this. So the, the sensor class just rep represents the camera itself, right? Um, and it's pretty simple to, to get reference on. Um, the, they're called, in version one, we called these streams. Now they're called data sources. sources um, and that, that came out of the, the Windows 8 guidelines. Um, this gives you access to the readers for all these um, uh, data streams that it has. The, the sensors expose one source per data type. Um, so once you have a reader, the reader gives you the access to the frames via eventing or polling. Polling would be like for games. I, I, I barely know that world. No, it's not just not that interesting for me, for that game loop type style of app. Mostly in .NET we do eventing type apps. Um, so take a look at this source code uh, using the readers. You, you get the source from the connect sensor and then you open the reader and you subscribe to that frame ready event. And then, excuse me, you subscribe to the frame arrive event, and then you'll get called back when that frame comes in. We'll, we'll stare at code in a second. This will make sense. Actually, it's going to make a lot more sense if you just take my code and step through it at home or, or tomorrow at work or something like that. So the frame reference gets sent in the frame event args, um, meaning it describes the data as it's sending the data to you. Um, they give you access to the frames itself. The, the acquired frame and the relative frame are the two keys. The acquired frame gives you access to the frame, right? So why don't you get the frame directly? Um, well, as it turns out, uh, eventing is non-deterministic. It happens based on the thread drawn, right? So technically, as you're pumping messages, you might get behind. So that's that's why the, you don't get, it, and then you'd have a null frame, and then you wouldn't you wouldn't be tracking that well, right? So, so that's why um, you don't get access to the frame directly. Um, and then, of course, it would bog down like crazy. Um, so if the frame is null, it's expired. So your, your app actually catches up pretty quickly to a valid frame. Um, when the event subscription fires, you get the frame reference from the frame event args. Um, and then the using block here in the C-sharp code uh, dispenses of the frame automatically when it's done. Um, so so it make sure you're ready for the next one. Um, we're going to go through all just all this interface stuff and we'll stare at code and play around in a minute. So um, the frames themselves give you access to the actual connect data so you can start using them. So when I'm doing that skeletal tracking thing or body tracking thing, you know, I if I uh, if, if I'm uh, you know responding to hand close hand open that type of thing, that that's the um, that's the actual data that's coming in and I'm processing with it. So it's recommended you make a local copy or access the underlying buffer to this stuff directly, and then this gives you the ability to act on it really quickly without having to keep all these frames alive that are actually being fired, rapid fired at you in USB 3, over the USB 3 interface. I, I casually mentioned that the frame itself contains the metadata, or the frame data itself contains the metadata about the frame along with the data. So at every frame you get, it will tell you the width and the height, the color format, and all that type of stuff. So it tells you how to use the data in addition to giving it to you. Um, and as mentioned, as I casually mentioned earlier, um, not closing or disposing of your frames will prevent you from getting new ones and get all bogged down. It, it's all pretty um, uh, self-explanatory. So let's take a peek at uh, this little app I built. 
so I was so infatuated with um, I was so infatuated with the way this thing sees in the dark that I thought, you know, why don't I um, see if I can get the connect to look in complete darkness and pull humans out of it by using the the infrared reader and then using the body tracking reader. Right, so I'm, I'm looking in the infrared camera, I see a human, and then I put like a circle or ellipse or something on, on his or her face. Does that make sense? There, let, let me step through it. So, and then we'll run. So that would be this guy. It started at 6, right? And I was late. 6.15? We don't really start at 6.30 anyway, so... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, um, we already battled that guy, right? And let me make it bigger so I can see. Oops. We, always, we already saw this. You'll believe me that if I open the package manifest, I have the camera, or I have the, um, the mic and the, um, the camera turned on. So um, I'm going to put an ellipse on the head, so I define that up front. Um, this is about, let's see, this is about... So that's, uh, uh, that's 167 lines of code. I really should have run it first, but let's, let me just show you the, the interesting stuff. All right, so we already talked about this. That's how you get reference to the sensor. And now I'm getting the infrared, I'm getting reference to the infrared reader um, because I'm going to look out with the infrared reader and I'm going to look for humans. Um, here, I need, I need a place to put the data. That's what that is. Um, I need to convert that infrared to an image because all the XAML is in this guy, I don't know if you're XAML people, the only thing this is, is a grid with a canvas in it and an image, right? So I'm just going to portray like a video image, I'm going to look out there and it's going to put a red ellipse on your heads, or, or, or if you move around and track them, all right? So um, uh, we write all this stuff, all that image stuff to a, a bitmap, and WPF is really good with, with this stuff. Um, here's the bodies. Remember, it tracks natively six people at a time. So technically, I'm limited to, you know, there's nine of us in here, and it's only going to get the, the first six it can see. Okay, because that, that's all it can see. The first, the V1 camera could see two at a time. This one could see six. Um, there's my image element. There's my bitmap source. Uh, now here's the main main page loaded. So I get reference to the sensor. Then I get the infrared reader. Uh, and then in in the data, I figure out how big those buffers are. Now I screw it around with the buffers. And then and then uh, in this app. Um, I gotta convert it to an RGBA, RGBA image. That there's a there's a much more elegant and powerful way to do this, but it would like triple the lines of code. This is truly like a hello world. Um, so still setting up my bits math stuff here. Um, so there's an array of six bodies because I've got to cycle through them. Um, and here's my frame reader to capture the, the body and the infrared data, right? Open the sensor. And then, now that I've all that, got all that stuff set up, I can start dealing with it. And that is, here's my multi-source frame reader, meaning I'm gonna suck in two data sources at the same time, infrared, and I'm gonna suck in the, the body reader. Uh, I gotta check for nulls. Uh, I gotta see if I, I've got good data here. I grab it, and then this is that business about um, making sure I'm not getting dead frames, right? And then, or null frames as they were. I'm hammering that into the array, 
And then this is the part, this is the part right here. I copied, I, I didn't write this, but I copied it. I found it um, on, on, I can't remember where I found it. But this is like the poor man's way to do infrared. You could, you could be a lot more elegant with this. So but what's that mean? I'm only going to be using the infrared reader for about 80% of its capacity. I could get another 20% you know, if, if this was a professional application in security and we're staring at a warehouse looking for people wandering through in the dark, you know, we do it the right way. But this is a hell of a world type app. So we do that, that, um, that converted stuff in, in uh, WPF so that I can uh, copy this stuff directly into the pixel buffer. And then, uh, then uh, now that I've got that infrared, I want to cram the body data and put it into an array because I'm going to iterate through the pieces of the body. It's going to give me for free, you know, head, joint, arm, leg, hand, knee, hips. There's, it reads like uh, 28 places on the body. So I'm going to iterate through that because all I want is the face. Because that's what I'm going to put a, um, a, a ellipse on. And I could put the HD camera, the raw camera on there, but if it's in the dark, we ain't gonna see nothing, right? Make sense? That's why we're just gonna put a red, like, Jack in the Box type thing on it. Okay, and then uh, I'm zooming through there, and ultimately, I'm gonna get a head right here. Let me scroll over so you can see this. Pretty, pretty simple code, you know? Uh, joint type dot head, joint top type dot right hand, joint top uh, joint type dot neck, stuff like that. And then um, here is that ellipsis business, and I'm just gonna put that on the head. And now I'm at, I'm just adding it to the the canvas and in the XAML canvas, and boom, I'm done. All right, want to see it run? Enough talking about it. God. So move your head. <laughs> See, it's looking into total. We really, for this demo, we really can turn off the lights, but you know. <laughs> so the idea is we're looking into total darkness, and it's pulling out the humans. Now, the question I usually get is, "Hey, could you do that for dogs?" And the answer is no. You can't do that for dogs. It, it's seeing humans natively. Well, is it a software issue, or I mean, it, it can't be a hardware issue that you can't see dogs, right? No, it, to see dogs, you'd have to use the depth camera, and the depth camera won't work in total darkness. Remember, for free, it, gets, yeah, it identifies a human, which is kind of cool. Processing. But it uses the, the the dog skeleton is pretty different than yeah. right the human. You know, technically, they could build they could build in you know German Shepherd <laughs> and recognize it in the firmware. Right. But you can't do it after the fact, like in the software. You probably could. Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be for the faint of heart. All right. So that was like 150 lines of code. That, I think that's pretty powerful. I think yeah. that's pretty cool. Sure. Uh, let's see. Four. Let's get that. This. Oh yeah, I got a pimp, to Carl. So. So, I'm all about developer productivity, and Carl Franklin's one of the .NET Rocks guys, you know, he does the internet talk show, great friend of mine. We're talking in a bar in Europe somewhere, and I'm like, you know what, the only thing that's really a pain in the ass, uh, sorry, is, um, you know, my, uh, uh, how do I, I said, my, we're building this interactive digital signage, and all I want to do is go like this. I want, I want to move to the next, right? Picture PowerPoint. I just want to do this. 
And I'm getting this whining from these 25 year, 25 year old engineers, like, oh, we'll have to track like a million, a gazillion points on the body, and you know, we got to accommodate someone who's three feet tall and someone who's eight feet tall, and it's, you know, they're just, just going to take so much work to build that gesture. So I'm like, Carl, couldn't you just record a gesture and have the computer do it? He's like, that's a great idea. So that's what you build. If you, if you want to build an interface where you're waving at computers the quick and dirty way, this is free. <laughs> Grab this thing. Um, it's, it's totally fun. So a demo I do with it is I get it, I have this little app. Um, I, uh, I uh, measure the touchdown gesture. And then uh, I record the word touchdown. So I walk in front of it, the app, run the app, and go like this, and it goes touchdown, touchdown. And you know, you can do that in like five minutes. It's a great demo. And of course, I don't have it on this computer. Um, whoops, I hit the URL. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. Here's the bad news. Remember I told you I was going to show you the bad news? So I, I told you it's got a, a Windows 8 dependency. Here's the really bad news. Right here. USB 3. Do you know how rare that is? It just so happens that a Surface, God only knows why, a Surface has USB 3. Excuse me, it doesn't have the right USB 3. You noticed when I did the verifier in the beginning, it said, shit, I don't know what this USB 3 is. Um, but it does work. Um, and then look at that bad boy. It's, it's crunching a lot of data. Now, we, we run production apps on i5s. And, you know, it's depending on what you're doing. But the, this thing needs a ton of horsepower, which is kind of a bummer. So you've got a $200 device, and then you've got to hook it up to these ultimate computers just to do anything. That's kind of a drag. I would speculate that they're going to overcome that. I don't know. They need USB 3.0 to get, to get popular. Um, and why is it USB 3.0 dependent? They're shoving so much data, so much data down the wire um, that it just USB 2.0 couldn't keep up. Anyone want to have some whiny comments about this? I know it's, it's, it's 150 dollar machine has USB 3.0. There you go. <laughs> Let's go. It's a $150 is laptop, it, so it can't it be a, that hard. Is it an i5? And no, it definitely doesn't have the processor requirements, but it does have a... a I'd be USB curious to see if... It's, it's just a Chromebook, so... Chromebook. It's not even like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so the processor... It's missing weak. the Windows. The processor is super weak, weak, but I'm just saying that yeah. one that one stack. That so one it's stack. got one... I don't think the USB 3.0 is... It's got one out of five. Yeah, yeah. The Windows thing would be important. They don't call these Windows kids for nothing. I understand. But this new Microsoft, you know, who knows? Yeah. I'm just convinced. Well, they do have those stream machines that are competing directly with the Chromebook. So I wonder that they, obviously, they don't have the power to do it. But they do have the Windows and probably the USB 3 component. One, one more thing checked off. Yeah. Do, you, do you guys use Xamarin yeah. to, to build cross-platform apps in .NET? Do you use that? It's kind of an expensive tool set. But Xamarin allows you to build like mobile apps right, on other platforms in C Sharp. Kind of cool. Miguel, I used to know a long time ago, the head of this company. Nice guy, really smart. I'm convinced, I shouldn't say this on tape, but I'm convinced that Microsoft is going to build it end to end. Just eliminate them and allow you to plat Visual Studio on every platform and platform to every platform and every device. It just makes so much sense. They've already done the hard stuff on the ASP.NET side for enterprise, they've done security. They've done the um, authentication, all that stuff. It seems so much sense to do it end to end. We'll see. Oh, that's all I got. Oh, wait, no, I need the big demo. Uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, let's see. So I did the demographic profiling. Yeah, okay. So but in review, we did uh, a facial recognition on this guy. I provisioned Mike quickly, did a facial recognition. Then we ran that Ospreys thing and showed uh, inaccurately the demographic tracking and stuff like that. Now, and oh, and then I showed you some digital signage that wasn't really rendered correctly. Um, um, but I said, look carefully at that. Remember that? So now look at 
this. Let's see, where is that? Get it so you guys can see it. And although it didn't show on the screen, you remember this? We walked in front of it, right? And then and it went to this. This is like, hey, touch me and get your coupon type mode. Now check this out. seeing? We're Big Brother. <laughs> In these coolers with this digital advertising, we're doing a demographic profile. And with this is real, I told you I'm totally into this consumer behavior stuff. At age 53, white male, I'm an ignored demographic, right? Because I'm not influenceable. Typically, you know, guys like us, can I, Tim, can I put you in the, in me and, you yeah. know, that, that, that 45 to 55 demographic, we're the, get off my lawn, we're those guys, right? We're, yeah. Just because Beyonce says she drinks Vitamin Diet Pepsi, I'm not going to switch from Coke. You know who does? Millennials. Millennials are influenced so easy, this is freaking scary stuff. Millennials are influenced when Beyonce says she drinks that Pepsi. And if they get a 40% coupon. And, and, and if you, we got to be careful the way we define millennial because it's defined many ways. But in the, oh shoot, I mentioned it on tape too. That giant CPG and then the other one we're working for and the other one we're, they're working for, it's, well, we have to ignore under 12 because of oh, yeah. privacy law. So we can, we can get age, we can tell if you're under 12. So we ignore those people, right? So from 12 to 28, that's the target. And typically a female, um, because they're influenceable. Well, how do I say this? Um, we can track you in a store just by watching you. And we may not know your name, but we know you go to the grocery market every Saturday at 9 o'clock and those companies will try to influence your behavior right if you opt in to do this like you would go to Facebook and say I opt in for the macaroni and cheese the free promotion and I agree to be tracked I would never freaking do that. Would you do that? You would never do that. <laughs> well, you, right? you would never do that. And you also have the grocery value cards. So yeah. yeah. Are it's our being it's done it's already now. Done. We're My doing wife it. goes in to bonds. <laughs> She's already activated your coupon, her coupons and my coupons for the week because it's already tracked all our purchases. And there's nothing that says this can say, hi, Dan, welcome back. By the way, you bought this ice cream last time. Here's a coupon. Exactly. And I'm way outside the demographic, but I'll. Well, I'll stop right that for forty percent off, my wife would purchase anything, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Seemingly, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So uh, th this is kind of space. We're not trying to be Big Brother, but it is kind of interesting. There are other implications for this type of stuff. Security is one of them. Also, um, in in many places of the world, not the U.S., um, child kidnapping happens a lot like in South Africa, kids are kidnapped. So in the grocery stores there, we were gonna track under the under 12s, right? And then there, there's, there's ways to, to set off alerts and alarms and stuff like that. Um, other scenarios would be um, 
Did you know? <laughs> People are so stupid. Grandma Huckabee writes her uh, four-digit ATM code on her ATM card. And she's not unique. There are gazillions of people who do this, who can't remember. You know, we have so many codes, right? It would make total sense to have a $200 camera above the ATM saying, hey, is that Mike? You know, would the, it makes total sense. Uh, but the consumer behavior stuff, what else do I want to show you? Um, oh, and, and notice we've got the little, uh, this is the configuration app for this, this software. Uh, notice we can screw. I do that oh, I do it with my hands. Dang. Wait a minute, bear with me. Oh, here we go. Uh. How did I do this? We the the point is that this is a brand new build of the software. I can't remember how to do this. We can screw with the scope that it looks. I told you it can see about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Well, we may only want to see um, 10 feet. Uh, the, the real power here is for the data scientists. We're capturing a ton of data. And it's all going up to Azure, and these data scientists visualize it, you know, and they look for buying patterns and, and all this stuff to affect consumer behavior. Mostly in product launches. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I can't screw with that. Oh, uh, oh, here's how I do it. Yeah. Looks on busy way. Yeah. So now it's looking out farther. And um, don't worry, we're, I, this is all. This data gets erased. We're, we're not going to save you. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need smart people's uh, consumer, or uh, smart people in a, in a room like this. <laughs> Neat, huh? Questions, comments? Yeah. Um, so um, I, thought, I thought, like, uh, do you record motion? Because I was thinking that would be, uh, that's what I thought what you were going to reveal is that you were recording, like, so, how he responded well, to the advertisement. I, just, I, I forgot to tell you. So <laughs> emotion, though, for us is, you know, this. Mm -hmm. Right, but typically, if you're looking at something and smiling, you could call it, "Hey, they like that." So we measure how long they look at the ad, and and, and with the percentage, you know, uh, Kelly. Well, in an in an opt-in scenario, Kelly had to be watch the Diet Pepsi ad for three minutes, which was eighty percent of the hat uh, of the ad, and she was happy, or she was smiling. She was happy for twenty percent of the time. And that all, all that stuff in store, including the demographic profile. Um, the brands want us to uh, do female with small person attached, but, but um, I think that that's that crosses the line a little bit. I think that breaks privacy law because we're supposed to ignore it. and understand that privacy law. This is a U.S. thing. In, well, in Germany, we never, ever will do any of this, ever, ever. In Asia, they're, you know, it's a, they have no privacy yeah. in Asia. Okay. <laughs> but wait, privacy comes in only if you can identify really, so it's not just a person A and a person B, but you can identify that this is, I don't so know. So can I, can I paraphrase? Can I paraphrase? In the U.S., and unfortunately, I know more about privacy law than I ever dreamed that I would, but in the U.S., um, we can do, I know, I have you in the database, I have your face. I don't know who you are, but I have your face, because we're not storing the picture, we're just storing the structure. We can do that. If you opt in, like in the casinos, in the big high market players, you know, that they'd spend all the money. They want to come in and just look at it and have it be recognized, and boom, their cell phone's like, here's your free primary of dinner, and, and uh, you know, LaToya Jackson is playing the concert tonight, or Celine Dion, or something like that. And then boom, 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 off. They don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. Crazy, huh? How yeah. Is, how old does it detect uh, where you're looking? I mean, can I turn my face this way and look this way, and it'll know, you know? Like 
In facial recognition? No, they're not just facial recognition, but like where my eyes are pointed, I guess more importantly. <coughs> like how do you know that they're looking at the ad and they're not just like looking at, you know, a different thing over here, you know, with their eyes? The answer is yes. We can tell whether you're looking right at the ad. Uh, yeah. Well, can you tell which part of the ad, you like, what's the accuracy like? Can you tell which part of the screen you're so, looking at? So, it's funny you bring that up because picture the supermarket. They're, the, yeah. the coolers are in banks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this software will spread across the banks. Mm -hmm. But they want to do exactly that. It's a little trickier. They want to do, you know, somebody's, Kelly Huckabee's on one end, Tim Huckabee's on the other. And we can target content based on those people. Mm -hmm. Right, but but your scenario is a little harder. Because I think like, can you do A/B testing where you have like a, an ad on the top and ad on the bottom, and then you notice, oh, they're staring at the the top ad, and then you expand, and then you provide another set. So it's like a choose your own adventure advertising, where basically the next stage is determined that's, by that's like how they, you react that's to exactly different parts of the. exactly what they want to do. So but this yeah. is so dynamic. You can, you know, in this thing. Uh, let me get rid of this. You can um, you can screw with these. Uh, you can screw with the regions. So like so now we've got we've got a definition of a new region, and now the camera we just haven't built it yet. It's doable, right? Yeah. We haven't built it like, oh god, the camera's now got to look in there. So we can get some accuracy, but okay. it's not built into to this version of the software. But that's exactly what they want to do. Mm -hmm. so the interactive zones and non-interactive zones, and they want to A-B test um, the, the, the ice cream company. They have a new product, um, Delft Bar things. Mm -hmm. And they want to A-B test against something Nestle ice cream cone or something like that. Yeah, makes sense. Makes total sense. And it's remember, it's just it's capturing data like crazy. Data, 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 data. Just watching consumer behavior. Neato, huh? All right. That's all I got. That's all I got for you. Here, let me wrap this up. Let me see if there's anything salient we want to talk about here. Uh, so if I did a good job here, I talked about where this thing is good and where it's not. You know, last time I was here, I was infatuated with waving at computers and, and manipulating interfaces. And that is kind of cool, and you've probably seen it now. You've seen it in hotels and stuff. Now we're engaging with the body and, and making, well, the brand, the CPGs want your eyeballs. We're, we're especially in Asia, where there's so much digital signage, we don't even see it anymore. Right? So they, you need movement, engaging stuff. Um, advertising, as we used to know it, is almost completely different. The, the traditional advertising is only really in the Super Bowl these days. You know, it's it's all it's all in in um, digital and, and electronic type of forms. You know, advertising in magazines is it's just dying. Um, this stuff is easy to build, relatively easy, until you get to Trig and Calculus. If you want to do anything advanced and connect, it's Trig and Calculus, and a lot of it. In fact, I should show you a bug we have. We have a Trig bug in there that I stumbled into today. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, in, a, in a keynote, I typically talk about, you know, I was there in an all-boys Catholic high school taking typing for a full year. Um, that's why I'm a machine gun today. And then I started programming, and in the early 90s, they invented this thing. And they told us that we were going to take our right hand off the keyboard and use this thing. This is before Windows, you know, GUI based software. You remember this. And it was the most, un well, you guys with gray hair remember this. Um, it was the most unnatural thing in the world, right? Remember that? It was so right, so wrong. And then you couldn't get your right hand back to the keyboard. And then those Apple people invented that iPad. And you know, remember Steve Jobs held it up and like it's like it's the in front of the lion, in the, like in the Lion King, in front of the entire animal kingdom. You know, here's the eight hundred dollar toy. Everyone buy it. And my wife said, Yes, I want one of those. 
But you did, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> the, point, the point is, um, who would have thought that they could build a browser that was completely touch friendly? Right? If, you, if you think about Windows, you know, this is, this is a surface, this is a touch-based computer. Look at that, that little red X in the top right. Even if I had the dexterity, that is very difficult to touch. Right? This is a touch-enabled OS, but it's really not touch-usable. Right? But those Apple people did such a good job. And my point is, now a two-year-old can walk up to an iPad and just use it because it's part of our culture. Doesn't, he or she doesn't need to be trained. They just use it. So I'm going to argue that these things in different implementations are just going to be more and more and more prevalent. And you're going to see more and more and more, and it's just going to be part of the way we use computers. Yeah. All right. Here's me. If you want any of this stuff, send me an email. I'm not going to save your email address. I'm not going to put you on the list. I don't. I don't even know how to do that. But I need to put all this stuff up in a place where you can download it because this deck is heavy. It's got pictures, so it's you know it's like 25 megs. So I can't just email this stuff around. Oh, I should probably show you before I let you go. Before we discuss. Uh, there are other 3D cameras out there. This just happens to be the best one right now. And what, what's, the, what's the great thing about hardware? A year from now, there'll be a better camera than this. And it'll be half the price. And it'll be smaller. And it'll see in sunlight. Oh, by the way, these things hate fluorescent lights and they hate sunlight. Infrared. But they do not work outside. Can you, you know, project this? Yeah, sure. Sorry. thought I was the only one with that. The top one, la, 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 la. actually that's two hundred dollars. There, and I'll project it. That was the old camera. Uh, this guy right here, the Leap. They have great videos on their site. <laughs> uh, I personally cannot. We we have owned some of these. I can't think of a use case. It reads fingers from about twelve feet high. I can't think of a good use case. And a VR headset, one of the problems is you don't have good except vision for, uh, into the except virtual for games. Yeah. Well, not games, just in general, like you know, like if you were to do maybe architectural stuff or something like that, you need to put your hands in the space. So the leap actually solves that problem because it handles dexterity very well. So yeah. it's a, I think it's a great use case for. for there we go. Virtual There's reality. a use case for the leap. The other one is Space Invaders. Oh yeah. 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 No. That makes total sense. But it's. Yeah, but plus it's cheap and it's <coughs> cross-platform. It's on every platform, so that's why it's cool. The soft kinetic folks, those are the ones that are in the, the new Intel. That's the Intel camera that's getting all the, the rage right now, the one that's really being built into computers. They've been around forever, great company. They just don't have the SDK that the Microsoft folks have. And then these folks discontinued their camera, but it's an amazing camera. In, in a small amount of use cases, it, it's also that, yeah. Uh, but it could see in broad daylight. Amazing technology, yeah. Um, ultimately, they have to solve the 3D camera for, for this. Yeah, what about the Tango? What, what do you think of the Tango? Uh, I haven't played with it. What do you think of it? Is that what you have one? <laughs> oh, I wish I bought one. I, I have the, the tablet one. Yeah? You know, the first one was a phone format. And actually, I would be interested in uh, uh, can you use the Kinect somehow for three D scanning, like uh, yeah, scanning a room, for example, the three D mesh of a room. Well, Kinect Fusion, which comes with the SDK, so I showed you the SDK and all the sample apps and all that. There's an app in there called Kinect Fusion with Source that was done by the machine learning folks, and it allows you to do exactly that but my computer isn't powerful enough to run it. So, and there's an app, there's an app that goes with it where you, you know, you, you use it like a vacuum, so like if it was this Pepsi thing, it would be like, it would build the 3D mesh, and then you can output to 3D printer. You can even output over the internet, there's a bunch of 3D printed, printer services. And the source code of that is? Uh, Fusion, open. Connect Fusion, here. Yeah. It's it's all the, the source code is open. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Everything's open in that company these days, except for Windows, because <laughs> they're embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, that's all I got. Yeah, hey, because you put your email up. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm driving to the Kern River. Tell us if there's water in there. Yeah. Oh, let me, can we do one more thing? Yeah. Sure. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, a software guy, but I'm, I'm really a nature guy by heart. You know, I'm a fly fisherman, catch and release, all that. Look at this. This is, this is unbelievable. Of course, you live here, so you probably know yeah. this. Uh, it's this one. Triple. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, I've been to this river. In June is the melt off. Yeah. That's where this this river is only seventy five feet wide at its at its most up in the upper part, and it is a raging, dangerous, nasty river at this time of year. Dangerous. You can't unfishable. Yeah, can you click on the show for you? No, years? no, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. <laughs> so it's currently at under, that's the lowest I've ever seen it. I fished it last year at about 250. This is the lowest I've ever seen it. This, well, this is on, This is during the drought. Yeah, no, that's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Normally, this river um, is at 2,500 CV. So yeah, cubic feet per second. You see, it was under 200. It's normally at 2,500 at this time of year. No snow. That's drought. No snow. Not good. Look how it dips in the fall. You know, I wonder how far it's going to go down. I mean, because it's just started, it's plummet, you know. Yeah. If you look at the three years graph, you know, they map the other years over it. So it looks like, you know, in the coming months, it should go down a lot further. Yeah, we need rain. We need rain in a bad way. We, we need just to That's make desalinization more efficient, and then you, we can pipe water back over to us instead of. <laughs> we I live in Carlsbad, yeah, California. Water we have a desal there. plant. Yeah. Oh, you guys do? Yeah. Oh, sweet. And but, the cool thing about the desal plant isn't as much as pulling the salt out. It's they have to go uphill. Um, and water has the the one of the the head of the environmental guy is in our neighborhood. He said, uh, I'm like, so you must spend so much energy pushing the water uphill, you know? And you don't, yeah, it's, it's got viscosity. It kind of pulls itself through. He yeah. says, we give it, when it comes out of the membranes down at the ocean, we give it a little shove, and then we actually give it a little pull on top. And that's it, and it goes for 10 miles and empties in a reservoir, that's kind of cool. But if we can pump oil, from Alaska, right. <laughs> we, we you know we have these things called Great Lakes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the the water can only get so expensive before we start doing that. So right. there is a, there is a limit where we'll, we will have solutions. <laughs> but the people of the Great Lakes are not bothered about the idea. <laughs> Why didn't you get the, the case for or the cover?